Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Aaron Urban about leadership well-being and strategies to gain more clarity and confidence. Aaron Urban, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you very much, Sean. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from outside of Houston, Texas. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about leadership well-being and strategies to gain more clarity and confidence in our leadership. And it's been a really, I mean, leadership is always a hard thing. Uh, and But I think this, these last couple of years have been a particularly challenging time for leaders because they, just like everyone else, they've been having to navigate the pandemic and the shutdowns and, you know, they have to be worried about that for themselves and for their families and for their, you know, friends and neighbors, but they also have to worry about that for all their people. And I've heard a lot of really great conversations around organizations providing more empathy and support and resources for their people during this time. Yet who's been doing that for the leaders? Who's been helping <laughs> leaders to recharge, to regenerate, to, to have the support that they need. And I'm not so sure that that's happened as much as it's happened, you know, in good organizations for, for other employees. So talking about well-being, I think is always important, but I think it's, it's particularly timely right now. And then of course, talking about how we can be more effective in our leadership and have more clarity and confidence, I think will also be helpful. Uh, as we get started, I wanted to share Aaron's bio with everybody. Aaron Urban is a certified leadership and career accelerator coach, helping emerging and evolving leaders gain more confidence and clarity to elevate their careers. She is an international speaker, neuroscience nerd, and host of Career Office Chat podcast. She is also the author of the best selling book, Elevate Your Career, More Impact, More Income. I love all of that. I love having a career of impact. I love um, everything around leadership acceleration and development. I think that's fantastic. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in further? Sure, John. As uh, those people who do know me know me, I'm a, I'm a huge neuroscience nerd. So I love studying neuroscience, behavioral science, and so forth. Because I think particularly for the high achievers that I coach, it, it, it strikes home more deeply. It's fine to have theory and go, oh, you should do mindfulness, meditation, ah. And most of the leaders I coach kind of give me a look. <laughs> and you know that look. It's the look of the high achiever going, really? I don't have time for that. And, and what science do you have to cite that that's actually useful and beneficial to my leadership strategy? And it's interesting you mentioned, John, right now we live in unprecedented times. And I'm sure that has not escaped anyone's notice. And what's interesting is you hit the nail on the head. Uh, we talk a lot about well-being and well-being is certainly top of mind now more than ever and as it should be. However, I don't think that leaders necessarily have been giving that the um, deep entertainment of thought and going beyond thought into action that we would like to see. For example, just last week, in fact, a client shared with me during a recent coaching session, she said, I completely understand that my direct reports need a break for well-being purposes. I just don't feel like that's accessible to me because of my responsibilities with everything going on with the pandemic and the great resignation, the great slash great reset. 
um, talent acquisition, uh, just managing, putting out fires, and then you have morale issues on top of that. Need I go on? So I'm preaching to the choir here, probably. The challenge here is leaders don't feel like they have the bandwidth. And when they hear the word well-being, and they think, well, that's great. That's a nice to have. And I totally understand that my teams need that. However, they're not necessarily taking that investment internally. Yeah, and that's it's a challenge for multiple reasons. I mean, first and foremost, if, if leaders aren't focused on their own well-being, they're going to have health issues, mental health challenges, um, they're because they're humans, they're people too. They're gonna, there's going to be burnout. They're, all of the same reasons why we focus on well-being for all employees apply to the individual. And so we want leaders to keep that in mind for themselves so that they can stay healthy and safe and productive and accomplish what they want. But the other piece of that is uh, not just for them so they can be well. If, if they're not doing it, they may say all of those well-being things and focus on, you know, mm. trying to help their people take advantage of programs and initiatives and take time off and whatever. But guess what? Most people are going to do what they see their boss do. And so if I'm a leader and I don't feel like I have the time to do it and I encourage other people to do it, they're not going to be, they're not going to be focused on self-care and well-being as much as they could or should be either, because they're going to look to their boss for modeling and, in and, and leadership in that regard. Uh, so you know, if I'm committed to helping my people do it, and I know it's important for them, and I just don't feel like I have the time, well, guess what? It's probably going to be less impactful on helping your people, you know, focus on their own well-being if they see you not, you know, eating through lunch, uh, uh, working through lunch breaks, not taking vacation time, working super crazy long hours, um, being on all the time. You know, if they see those things, that's what they're, they're going to tend to do, especially those that are really career minded and ambitious. You're exactly right, John. Leaders obviously set the tone and model behavior for their teams of people who report to them and around them. So, what's interesting is um, when I, the coaches, the leaders that I coach, they get it, but they don't get it. Does that make sense? Like, they get the theory. And the application, I mean, it tends to go by the wayside because we're very busy. It's a very what next society. And we must admit that particularly in the US, we worship on the altar of being busy. If we are not busy, therefore we are not productive. And I mean, if you're not busy, then you're not a contributing member of society. What's wrong with you? And because historically we kind of worship this busyness ideal, most of the high achievers I coach really struggle here because it, in the past, it's been enough to just push through true grit, um, keep your head down, just get through it, um, put more energy into it, this too will pass, but that is no longer the path forward that we can take. That is no longer enough because we are in unprecedented times. That's just not a flippant term or something cool you see on the news line. This is literally, literally, ladies and gentlemen, we have a pandemic. We're still dealing with, you know, we have, you know, a talent acquisition and retention issues. We have disaster fatigue, which is a real thing. We have, uh, you know, uh, morale. I mean, and on top of that, we have a constant and compounding change cycle. Because of this, the amount of energy that is required for the individual, whether you are a leader or not, to be honest, is much greater. So you may have noticed in your interactions, those around you, people just do not have the capacity for more right now. Yeah. And add on top of that social and political strife and challenges. I mean, and even just like things like the war in Ukraine. Um, and that there's just an overall heaviness, <laughs> you know, that when I talk to people, there's a sense of there's overall, overall heaviness, the uncertainty, um, uh, about the future. Uh, that's always been, the, I mean, there's always been that, uh, and we always know that we don't know what the future is going to bring wholly, but you know, the, the rapid chase of, uh, pace of change, as you referred to earlier on top of all these other things. Man, it, it just it just creates a dynamic where people are reeling, and it's it's been a real challenge. And so, of course, well being is important for everyone, as we talked about. Um, how do we disrupt this, though? So, how do we focus on leadership well being? Um, and how do we, you know, if, if I recognize I'm kind of a workaholic, I, I'm always on, I'm putting out fires, I don't feel like I have the time. 
yet I recognize, you know, intellectually, I understand theoretically why it's important. How do I disrupt that so I can actually start putting into practice, uh, you know, self-care and mental health well-being practices and other, you know, other things to make sure that I'm taking care of myself and setting that great model for my team? Really good question. So first thing I would encourage people to do is go from theory to reality. And just like I cited in my Forbes article, seven self-care strategies for leaders, if stress exists for a long enough period of time, there will be negative consequences. And some characteristics you might see are a lack of listening, overanalysis, failure to make decisions, erratic, fearful, or angry emotional decisions. So when you look at it, and that's, that's cited research, that's just not theory. That's just not, oh, well, I thought you might want to know. No, that is actual scientific research. So let's take go from theory to a nice to have into, this is necessary. In addition, when you're in a constant compounding change cycle, very strong change cycle, which we're in right now. And by the way, there isn't a normal yet. I call this the never normal, okay? <laughs> the never normal is where we are right now. We're in this constant compounding change cycle. It requires literally more energy for our brains and bodies. Because your brain burns more glycogen, that's the energy by which it utilizes to think and do all the wonderful things our brains do. In change, a strong change, the brain burns more glycogen than normal. So you literally feel physically exhausted in addition. So let's shift from theoretical and nice to have into understanding, first of all, number one, that it's a reality and it is no longer a nice to have or a luxury. It is a leadership requirement to be performing at your best. Full stop. It's non-negotiable. It's no longer something we can just set aside. So that's the first step. And that's the step I encourage everybody to consider first, because historically, we've not really, as leaders, we haven't allowed ourselves to relax. We, we have it. And, and, and to, so in a lot of ways, we have this weird sense of pride about it, too. We're like, I'm really busy, and I'm tough, and I had to tough this out. Well, wonderful. However, that, it, that's no longer enough. Yeah, it really is in, in Western cultures and particularly in the U.S., man, you're, you're spot on. That's the mentality, not for everyone, obviously, but certainly for high achievers and for people who are ambitious and want to move on in their careers. And generally, there's a, this general sense that we should be productive and we should be doing things and always doing things and always on. And and then you start to take time for yourself. And then, you know, there's kind of the shaming and you're selfish. And why aren't you spending more time with your family? Like, there's a never ending list of like all these things um, that you're supposed to be doing. Check out my new book, The Future Leader, Creating and Transforming Next Gen Organizations. Stemming from two decades of professional experience and over 600 in-depth interviews with executives, thought leaders, and scholars from across the globe, the future leader will help you explore the ordinary, everyday actions that will help you to prepare to lead in the future of work, to respond to an uncertain future, and to produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy. Courses, micro credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. All HCI Academy courses, micro credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.
we can't do everything. It's just simply impossible. And especially when we're in a leadership role, uh, we can't be on all the time. It's just not sustainable. Uh, so we do need to disrupt that mentality. We do need to invest in ourselves. And I don't know, like I've found uh, for me, like I know over time, I've learned how much sleep I need to, to function at an optimal level, right? Now, are there times where I don't get that sleep because I'm busy and I can't get to it? Like there's just emergencies, there's things I have to do. Yeah, there's times that that happens. Are there times where I'm not able to get good sleep simply because I'm stressed or I have anxiety or whatever? Yeah, that happens too. That's also a sign that probably I need to recalibrate and do some things to make sure that I'm getting the sleep I need. But if, if, if I fall into the trap of thinking, well, I can just consistently get by on four to five hours of sleep. There are people that can do that. I've known people that can do that. But the, most people cannot do that. <laughs> and if you, if you do that, eventually it will catch up to you. And you may be able to do that and then go to meeting after meeting after meeting and kind of plow through your day. But are you actually contributing? Are you actually going to be there meaningfully engaged? Probably not. Are you going to be able to contribute at the level that you would otherwise if you had gotten more sleep? And so, you know, Take the time to get the rest you need, the sleep that you need. Take the time to take breaks during the day. Take the time to eat well, to exercise. Like all of these things, it's not rocket science, yet we don't do it because we allow ourselves to get sucked into the trap of just being busy all the time and then feeling like we're being selfish for taking care of ourselves. And I have to admit, like I, that's something I have struggled with too. I'm, I'm kind of a, a high-performing kind of person. Like I just like to get things done. I like to accomplish things. I like to check things off my list. I like to do all of that. And I like, to, I like being able to, to say that I've accomplished all these things. Um, and I, but I'm also a family man, you know, I have, I have, uh, I've been married for 20 years. I have six children. I like to spend time with them. I want to spend as much time with them as possible. Uh, and so, especially while having young children, I always felt guilty, like just being able to take 15 minutes for myself. I always felt guilty because then I'm not, you know, helping my wife or I'm not taking, helping take care of the kids, or I'm not, you know, giving the attention to a child that they would appreciate, you know, and literally to the point where I felt guilty if I even took 10 or 15 minutes for myself. And that's not healthy. That's not sustainable. <laughs> and, and so over time learning that I'm going to be better for my children, I'm going to be better for my wife, I'm going to be better for everybody around me, if I can just make sure that I'm doing those things that need to happen every day. It's not selfish. It's, it's about caring more for the people I love and care about, right? Exactly. We, it, it's very interesting. We get sucked into this trap of, oh, if I take time for myself or I focus on my own well-being, if I make that shift in my energy, then I'm a bad person. <laughs> because as leaders, we, we exist to support other people. I mean, how dare we, right? Here's the reality. You cannot give what you don't have. You can't pour from an empty cup. So when you look at it from that perspective, in order to show up 100%, be at your best, be the leader that you want to be, you have to put something back in that cup. You have to re-energize. You have to restore. And let's come over hurdle number two that I hear a lot. Let's, tell, let's talk about that. I don't have enough time. Well-being practice. When we hear well-being practice, I mean, you must admit, probably things go through your mind, like this person doing yoga in this beautiful scenic background or a you know, hike in the Himalayas or a spa day or what have you. Okay, uh, well-being practice, a healthy one, does not necessarily just include bubble baths. Although if that's your thing, great. But it's actually much more simplistic than that and much more straightforward. And over the years of my research and the coaching that I do, I've come up with a few of those and I'm happy to share with you that don't take really any significant amount of time in the day. They really don't. However, the impact of those very simple practices is tremendous. So John, would you like me to share that with everyone? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Let's walk through that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So number one is, and you hit the nail on the head earlier, practicing the art of the pause. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I need to take breaks throughout the day. No, this is intentional breaks and it needs to be a little bit structured. The good news is it 
at most 10 to 15 minutes. So what I encourage all of my clients to do, and anyone that's still long enough to listen, is to take four to five 10 to 15 minutes breaks a day. Ideally, every hour and a half to two hours at most. And there's a really good reason for this, because research has proven that over time, our cognitive function, if we, if we stay in our task positive network in our brain, which is um, the, the part that you use to watch videos and plow through spreadsheets and answer emails, et cetera, or make decisions, um, that network needs a break <laughs> to restore. It's similar to asking a runner to sprint for hours. It's just not possible. So over time, your cognitive function will decline. And in order to stay at peak performance and make the best decisions, feel more calm and balanced and clear, more clear-minded, taking those 10 to 15 minute breaks every couple of hours through, throughout the day and being intentional about that and making that non-negotiable is very, very critical. And in fact, the people who do this, who have shifted from being, you know, busyness, you know, really shackled to this busyness ideal and, oh gosh, I got to do something, fill up every single moment of my life and then allowing also the firefighting mode to intercede and interject and overcome perhaps those moments that they would normally carve out for themselves when they truly were intentional about just this simple, simple thing. The, everyone comes back to me and goes, wow. I had no idea how impactful something just as simple as stepping outside for a moment and taking a breath of fresh air, daydreaming, doodling, um, just being still. You don't need to go do yoga in the woods, although that sounds fantastic. If you have time for that, man, great. But <laughs> most of us don't. Um, so, and you also don't need to be a meditation guru. Just taking a few moments to pause and don't give in to the smart device, look at great puppy videos on Facebook or whatever, because that also puts a load back on your task positive network. So really unplugging, doing something habitual. If you work from home, perhaps that's, you know, throwing the dirty clothes in the laundry. It's just something you don't have to think about going for a walk. Very, very simple. Yeah. And, it, and literally you can just step outside, sit on a bench, for five minutes, practice some deep breathing, listen to the birds, <laughs> you know, like whatever. Right. And I have to remind myself too, cause I'm a big podcast consumer. Um, and I have been for years and years. And so part of me is like, you know, I, I also, I'm very religious about walking my dogs. Um, so I walk my dogs at least a couple times a day, get outside. We live next to a really beautiful park. So, so I get that opportunity. And a lot of times I'll pop in my pot, you know, my, my earbuds and I'll, I'll listen to a podcast and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Like walk my dogs, enjoy listening to a podcast. I'm catching up on whatever, but I also every now and then I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. I've been, you know, it, I don't want to do that every time. Um, sometimes I want to do that. Other times I just want to go and be, and not have anything going on inside my head. And when I, when I do that, if I find myself falling into the pattern of always sticking in my earbuds, when I, when I snap out of that and, and just take them off and just be there and with my pets and with walking around and with nature and just enjoying the sounds of nature and the smells and everything, just being present with it. And it doesn't need to be a long time. It's, it is rejuvenating. It is reinvigorating. And it, you know, my wife tells me, she's like, John, we need you to go on that walk with the dogs just as much as you need to go on that walk with the dogs. So it's better for everybody when I can take that 15, 20 minutes or whatever to just make sure I do that and, and make sure that I'm taking off it. You know, again, sometimes listen to podcasts, fine, no problem. But if I'm doing that every time, I'm not taking the opportunity to really reset my mind. And there's a huge benefit in that. Yes. And notice noting what your inputs are. So if you want to take this to the next level, we are, we are truly a product of our inputs. Um, I'll give you an example. One of my clients, <laughs> he's a mid upper management and he, after listening to him, I mean, he was just angry. He was just ticked off <laughs> and leadership. Everybody was bad. You know, companies were terrible. I mean, the world's going to heck in a handbasket the whole nine. And I was thinking to myself, there's something going on here. So I'll follow my coaching intuition. And I ask him, We'll call him Sam. I said, Sam, what do you listen to in the morning? Because I just had, he's a, he's a podcast kind of guy, you know, a live, live show kind of guy. 
he said, yeah, I listened to this uh, show and it's all about how, you know, basically the evils of the world and big corporations and how leaders are terrible and blah, da, 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 da. I was like, oh yeah, no correlation here. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, Sam, would you like to try an experiment? Sure. Why don't you try just for a week, maybe two, not listening to that show and just noticing if there's a difference in your attitude. <laughs> our next session he came to me he's like wow he goes you know my leaders aren't that bad <laughs> the company isn't going to heck in a hand basket and he goes i didn't have any idea how much just something that you know superficially simple you wouldn't even think they don't have much of an impact he said i really did set my mind to this certain focus and i was seeing all this like yeah that's how our brain works whatever you focus your energy on is what your brain will filter because we receive somewhere around 11 million bits of information per second but we don't process all that we only process about four to five um, bits of information per second um, some people more but that's the average and you can clearly see that there's also a lot of filtering going on so wherever you put your energy is likely what you'll see more of and then start to reinforce uh, that mental thought pattern so if you're a person who's thinking gosh you know my mental thought patterns really aren't uh, supporting me right now just pay attention are you listening to the news too much not that we're advocating sticking your head in the sand but perhaps you can be a little bit more intentional about that um, where you get your news from and when um, at certain times of day better for you just paying attention to your mental and physical energy and the fluctuations throughout the day will help you tremendously, like I do with my clients, create more of an energy roadmap for you where you can show up at 100% energy, 100% of yourself and really leveraging your executive presence to the max without having sideswiped by external influences. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Aaron, this has just been a real pleasure. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute. We've just scratched the surface. There's so much more to talk about here, uh, but that's going to have to do for today. Before we wrap up, though, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, where they can find your book, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Absolutely. So you can find me at coacheurban.com. That's coach, first initial E, last name Urban as an urban cowboy. You can't miss that. Go to urban.com. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Share a lot. Also, I have a live show there and podcast, Career Coffee Chat, live on Tuesdays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. So feel free to reach out to me there. Send me a note. Send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. And as far as the word of the day, well, my friends, keep elevating. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Aaron. It has been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, to get connected, find out more about what Aaron can do for you. Check out her book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer than Indigo Leadership, the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. The 
alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.